start by introducing Didier Milleraud, who is the head of the unit in DG Market, which uh, has produced uh, and taken the key role in motivating the European Commission proposal on behalf of Michel Barnier. I think one of the things that really needs to be uh, highlighted right from the very start is that this is not just a, prog uh, a proposal about one aspect of the governance dimension. It is bringing together the human rights, the social, the environmental in a way which uh, one sees so little of in the city, frankly, where we deal in silos far too much. So I do think that uh, DDA and his team are to be congratulated thoroughly. Let me hand over to him and ask him whether he wants to speak from here or speak from his chair. Fine, he's comfortable in his chair. Thank you very much. Let's move on. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. As long as you can hear me, it's fine. Um, good morning, everyone, and thank you very much to you, CSR Europe and, and Bursa Matsala, for having inviting us uh, at this very tiny moment, uh, a few weeks after the adoption by the Commission of its uh, proposal. Um, I think in the five minutes which have been uh, attributed, I will try to give you the main features of this proposal and also maybe explain a bit about the next steps, and then I will pass the ball to MEPs who are going to be in charge of the actual decision about it because it is, as you know, only a commission proposal and the uh, European, I would say, democratic process now implies that it's going to be discussed and approved by the European Parliament and by the European Council. But I will come back to this afterwards. First, a few words about the content. So what we are talking about here is a proposal which is amending the current EU accounting directive. You know that there is an accounting directive in the EU that sets uh, out the different requirements that EU companies have to follow up in terms of how they report on their uh, activities, the uh, annual accounts they have to produce, the financial information they have to produce. This is all regulated by the so-called fourth and seventh uh, accounting directive. And what we are doing here is amending this directive to include into this text new obligations on companies to report on non-financial matters. It is, when you look at it, quite a simple text. Uh, it has basically two major provisions. The first provision is a requirement to include in the annual report information on the policies, risks, and measures taken to mitigate these risks in the area which have already been mentioned by Mr. Curry, I think, which is the environmental field, the social field, the uh, respect of human rights, the fight against bribery, and the fight against uh, money laundering. So all these risks which companies are facing in their daily life, in the way they perform their activities, have to be now uh, identified and reported, and, be, and this uh, information has to be present in the annual report of the company, which also contains the information on the financial performance of the company. So that's a kind of integration already which we have uh, in mind. And there's a second provision, which also has been already uh, alluded to, which is a provision regarding diversity. We want that in the management report that the listed companies have to produce, also according to the accounting directive, information is given on the company's diversity policies. By diversity, we intend not only uh, gender diversity, male versus female, but diversity in a broad sense, because diversity, diversity can also mean uh, or refer to your uh, original uh, geographical origin, to your professional background, to your educational background. And we think that diversity should be, I would say, apprehended as a whole concept in order to make sure that the uh, governing bodies of the companies uh, targeted are made of people of diverse original backgrounds so that the, uh, the way of thinking, the way of uh, looking at problems and risk is not always the same. And I would refer to what Mr. Curry said about the old boys style management. And this is exactly what we have in mind uh, in this respect. So this, basically, this is what the proposal is about adding to the current accounting rules two new obligations, first on environmental, social, and I would say mm -hmm. CSR uh, issues, transparency on risk, and then a, also a point on diversity in the management report. Why did the Commission come up with this proposal? Basically because we think it is good. 
it is good not for the companies first. It is good to be more diverse. It is good to be more transparent. It means that you will have a more long-term perspective in the way you are managed. It means that you will probably be able to retain uh, people inside your company, good people, with, uh, uh, you will be able to motivate them, and you will probably have also be able to build up a better reputation because it is good inside the company, but also it's good in the way you can communicate and be, be presented to the outside world. Linked to that, we think also it's good to, for investors. Uh, we think that there are more and more investors who are looking for that kind of information. We would like to know how companies perform in this respect. Uh, we have had contacts with insurance companies, with investment funds who really have now integrated that sort of dimension into their investment policies and into their investment choice. So we think it is something which, is, which we need to provide to them. And it's also basically good for the society in general because many stakeholders are also asking for that information. Stakeholders within the companies, like the employees for instance, but stakeholders outside the companies as well, like consumers and other and citizens in general, who would like these companies to become more concerned with their impact on the global society. So we think that this is a good thing to do. But when you look at the current situation and at the figures which we have highlighted in, in our impact assessment, you realize that although we think this is good for companies, only 10% of these companies are doing it. And only 10% is obviously not enough. So this is what is currently the exception we would like to become the norm. And in order to do that, we need to look at the current situation. There are already bribes of legal obligations in, in this accounting directive, but they are drafting in such a way that they did not lead to a, a very, I would say, strong implementation in the member states. They leave a lot of margin of maneuvers, both the companies and member states, to, to implement. So we need to give them a little push we need to clarify the legal obligation, and this is, this is the whole concept of our, of our proposal. So basically, we would like this 10% to become much more. Um, we have a target of 18,000 companies, and I will come back to that later when we, um, when we discuss the scope of the companies. So as we were invited by the parliament, I mean, uh, we have here uh, on this table two authors of recent reports in the parliament, Mr. Howitt and Mr. Balasare, who invited us to have a, an ambitious proposal, but also a reasonable proposal. I uh, will try now to explain how we have taken this reasonable aspect into, into account. First, this is reflected in the way we have designed the scope of the proposal. I mean, the choice was between imposing this obligation or these new obligations on all companies or targeting, let's say, the, the biggest one, the listed companies and the large companies which are not listed in the EU. And we have made the second choice. You know that the Commission is very much uh, concerned with the need not to overbur overburden, uh, especially the small and medium-sized companies in the EU, so that leads to the decision not to cover them in the new proposal. So the new proposal is targeted on all listed companies, those who are listed on stock, regulated stock markets. And for those who are not listed, we are uh, imposing the new obligation on companies having more than 500 employees and a annual turnover of 40 million euros or a uh, balance sheet of 20 million euros. So again, the obligation only applies to those. But there's also flexibility in the, I would say, the way we have designed the content of the obligation. For instance, we do not regulate the way the companies will have to produce their report on CSR or their report on diversity. We give them flexibility to do so. We all know that there are a lot of, I would say, national and international frameworks being designed to assist companies in the production of those reports. We allow these companies to use these frameworks and to refer to them in the reports they're going to, to, to produce, but we don't make it, I would say, compulsory. The reason being that these reports are very much diverse. The different topics which we are covering are also extremely diverse, from environmental issues to social issues, human rights. We did not feel ready to impose a 
strong, I would say, compulsory reporting regime on companies, and we believe it would be better and more effective to leave them, I would say, the flexibility to develop this framework um, when implementing the text. Uh, we can see, we will see in the future how this will develop. We will also see what the uh, co-legislators will uh, think about this approach. But at the Commission level, we did not feel ready to, to go a step further in this respect. And uh, last point on flexibility, we also allow companies who do not pursue policies regarding some of the risks we have highlighted to uh, explain why they do not uh, pursue these policies. Because we want, uh, I would say, do, do not want to impose, uh, I would say, uh, ridiculous obligations on companies who, who, I would say, would not be confronted to any issues pertaining with uh, a risk of violation of uh, human rights or things like this. They can, they can explain that. So basically, in a nutshell, this is uh, the content of, of our proposal, which we wanted ambitious but also flexible. We want this to be a real, I would say, quantitative but also qualitative step compared to the current situation, making sure that m many more companies, that is currently the case, will report and will integrate this into their organization and management. Um, but as I said, this is only a commission proposal. The ball is not given to the parliament and to council. We very much hope that we will have a deal before the, um, the end of the year. We think that uh, we have a window of opportunity that we need to, uh, to use. You know that next year is an important year in terms of political ev uh, events, the, the, the European Parliament is going to be re-elected, there's going to be also a new commission, so it would be very good if we could have a, a deal on this proposal before that. And before I pass the floor to you, Mr. Curry, maybe a few points about what we believe are going to be the, uh, I would say, the key uh, points that we are going to be discussed in the uh, uh, future legislative process, <coughs> based on, on the, the first reactions which we have received uh, on our proposal. Uh, the first, I think, is going to be the uh, binding versus non-binding aspect of the proposal. We know that um, hearing from some of the stakeholders in the member states, but also in some parts of the industries, that the fact that we pass, impose binding obligation is not necessarily uh, welcome by everybody, so this is going to be one of the, uh, the key issues. Uh, the second point is something I already uh, mentioned, which is the need or absence of need for additional guidance for companies on the way they report. I've heard already uh, many stakeholders telling me that probably what we have put here is n not necessarily enough, that some companies would like to have more reassurance and uh, more guidance in terms of how they can uh, comply with the directive. We will have to discuss this. And there is the last point, the issue of the I would say monitoring or ex post control of the way the company reports. At the moment, we did not uh, foresee any specific or additional measures compared to the current, I would say, safeguards which are already in the accounting directive. Uh, in the accounting directive, it is already um, uh, foreseen that auditors, for instance, would uh, perform a consistency check on this kind of report. So this consistency check will happen according to a proposal, but we have also heard voices that maybe some additional control mechanism could be, uh, could be added, for instance, specific votes within the governing bodies of a firm, or even putting in place some specific uh, national, I would say, uh, supervisory mechanism. Uh, this is going to be discussed. We did not want to go into this direction because we think that what is key at this stage is to give information on the public fora, give stakeholders the opportunity to get that info and be able to use it in the way they believe it is more efficient. But we, are, we anticipate some discussion in this, uh, in this field. I will stop here and I'm very happy to listen to what Mr. Baldassare and Mr. Huit are going to say and also um, Mr. Kier from the uh, Danish government because of course it's a co-decision we are talking about here. Thank you very much. Well, thank you very much indeed for uh, a very complete, very targeted uh, introduction. Uh, I can imagine that uh, in addition to some of the issues you've raised, which will no doubt come up in questioning and discussion in the course of the day, the old question of com comply 
or explain might be another issue for uh, a number of people around the room.